Hello again YouTube and welcome back to Just Get A Tesla. I'm on another trip as you can probably tell by the GoPro rig hanging from the roof of my Tesla Model Y and I am currently on the A1 in Northumbria where I have just supercharged at what initially was an intriguingly busy supercharger and then I looked at the number plates on what was mostly Tesla Model Ys and they were all basically brand new. So here's the question. Is the Tesla Model Y the new Ford Model T? And the reason why I'm asking this question is very, very simple. Back in the 1920s, so a full century ago, and a little bit before that, Ford developed a new kind of car manufacturing, which enabled him to make cars much cheaper than other people, much quicker than other people. And quickly became the ubiquitous car. Any colour you like, as long as it's black. And with most Tesla Model Ys, it always seems to be any colour you like, as long as it's white. And mine's white, and a lot of other people's are white because it's a beautiful pearlescent white colour, and it's free. So why pay extra for colour? And with Ford, they didn't even give you that choice. It was you can have black, or you can have black, or get it painted yourself. Um, but why do I say this? Well, in quarter one of this year, 2023, globally, the Tesla Model Y was the best-selling car. Globally. Not best-selling vehicle, because then you start adding in pickup trucks and high all in America. I know Ford F-150 still rules the roost. But globally, in quarter one, this car sold more than anything else. And that's the kind of ubiquity that Ford managed to get with the Model T. They were everywhere and they did everything. They obviously built a chassis and shoved the engine on the front um, and then you can have different body styles and things added onto the back. Okay, it's not quite the same thing with the Model Y, but effectively there are two different kinds of it because obviously this is a Model Y, this is the fat high up version. But you can also, of course, get the Tesla Model 3, which is the same chassis and the same mechanicals and, frankly, largely the same interior. It's just shrunk down. So that's kind of the same, isn't it? So when I say about Tesla Model Y being the best-selling car in the world, if you add the Model 3 on as well, you're onto some serious, serious numbers. Now, I've obviously started a YouTube channel called just get a Tesla because when I started to think about which EV I was going to get whilst I really 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 like Hyundai Kia so I would quite happily have had one of them but there was a couple of issues that made me think no I loved my Volvo S90 so I would loved to have got a Polestar 2 but again there's an issue and that issue is charging because in the United Kingdom, at least, in May 2023, when I'm recording this, public charging is rubbish. Absolute garbage. You have got 40 competing networks, um, each of them with a different method of payment. Admittedly, you can now just tap and pay as you go with a credit card with quite a few of them. But for most, if you want to get the best rate, you have to have an app. So every single one of these guys, you have an app. You've got all your personal details involved. You've got your credit card details uh, in there. And you've then got to wait for the app to sync to the payment system before the machine will actually start vending you electricity. As I found out when I've used public charge networks, that can be unreliable. So... With Tesla, you don't have any of that because your car tells the supercharger pump who it is. You already have a credit card set up on your account when you bought the car and it immediately starts vending you power. And then you literally click off, put the hose back and off you go. And it builds into your account. The Tesla advantage is primarily what drove me to Tesla. Okay, it's not, of course, the only reason. I have been interested in EVs basically for a decade now, we got a Nissan Leaf in 2014. Great technology, awful car, terrible dealerships. I mean, really terrible, terrible dealerships. An EVM's channel started uh, where somebody uh, whittled in the wash bottle of his Nissan Leaf while it was being charged up. So you don't have those problems with Tesla. You don't have to think about different charging networks and 
is it going to work when I get there? And is it going to cost me a preposterous amount of money, as most of them seem to do when I get there? None of that with Tesla. So with an interest in Teslas anyway, from the early days, but thinking I'll never get one, it's too big. The Model S for me is too big. And it's just a little bit over the top. I still think it's a really good looking car, but obviously that's now been axed as an option at the moment for any right-hand drive market because they don't want to basically swap the steering column across the way that the battery pack is designed makes that a problem. So it ended up being, well, the Model 3 and it's going to be really cheap and that's quite exciting, isn't it? But actually we did test drive a three and for our use it's just a little bit too small and then the y came along and oh, the y for me is just perfect it is the best blend of size and shape usability internally there is a ridiculous amount of room inside this thing and you've got this enormous glass roof uh, the windows are set low down it's a really really big glass area it's a lovely environment to be in and a lot of other people clearly are coming up with a very similar um, argument that I have because all we're seeing at the moment is more and more and more and more and more Tesla Model 3s and Tesla Model Ys going on the road. And that's why superchargers like that one up there, which, you know, go back before Christmas, this place was dead. And then today, I almost didn't get on a stall. That's impressive. That just shows you the amount of demand that is being created by the products that Tesla have got. And let's also understand the other thing that Tesla have done, which is very similar to Ford, which is the speed and the cost of production. Every other EV that you can buy out there, with very few exceptions, is basically made on a production line or at least in a factory where they're making petrol and diesel cars so there is a very specific way of designing a car and therefore of assembling a car where you are basically dropping a big engine and gearbox uh, package into the bonnet now so many EVs even the ones that are designed from the ground up as an EV still have effectively a motor inverter stack under the bonnet and no particular space used they've got to build the thing the conventional way and the conventional way is lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of parts and then sub assemblies and you're assembling parts onto an assembly and then you're bolting that part onto the chassis as it's going along and then you're adding this and you're adding that with tesla everything is designed from the ground up exactly the same as ford had to do with the model t this car is built in a way that no other ev manufacturer does tesla have literally reinvented the wheel just as ford did a century ago you have got these massive gigapress machines which create the front and the back pressings which have the front and rear axle and also have the motors in them the battery pack under the floor is structural this is a load bearing thing. The body is then built separately and then just plonked on top exactly the way that Ford was doing with the Model T. So there is quite a lot of connections and parallels if you actually stop and think about it. It's not a crazy argument to say that, you know, just as the Ford Model T revolutionized the way that cars were done, I really do think that the Tesla Model Y and the Model 3, obviously it's slightly smaller uh, sister, those cars have revolutionised the way that people look at EVs. And it's not because they're the only choices out there, although it's a good choice. It is the fact that fundamentally, what else are you going to get? And there's a lot of choice and there's a lot of different manufacturers, but they're all building it the old way. But Tesla smashing it across the globe think about it is this going to be literally the breakthrough point that forces all of the other manufacturers to change their processes to be able to make the kind of profit levels that tesla make to be able to compete with tesla and therefore to be able to capture all of that lovely market share i really think that is the case and that is what ford did with the model t anyway this is a short video so let me know in the comments, what do you think? Am I mad? Have I got a point? Uh, like and subscribe, all of the usual yada, yada, yada. The videos for this trip will come up 
on the channel, obviously, and if you subscribed, you'll get to see them. So, I'll see you again very soon back here on Just Get a Tesla.